second time and I call the Honourable the Parliamentary Secretary. Thank you Deputy Speaker and like my colleagues on this side of the House in both Liberal and National Party I rise to speak in support of the package of three bills to strengthen Australia's foreign investment framework and it's a great pleasure to follow my friend the member for Jellybrand who uh, gave us a, a lot of misinformation and accusations about double standards and hypocrisy and suggested that um, the people on this side were conflicted in relation to our dealings with China but failed to mention the basic problem with the argument from a Labor perspective is they're opposed to the Chinese Free Trade Agreement. Uh, the member Jelly Brands left the chamber, but I look forward to catching up with him soon and, and hearing more about uh, how he now supports investment between Australia and China. We've got a lecture on it's always very it's always very amusing for members uh, who come from regional communities, uh, like my colleagues, the member for Forest, Noel Marino. And the member of Lyons here behind me, Eric Hutchison, who actually represent farmers in this place, to get lecture from the member, member for Jellybrand about farming is, uh, is quite amusing. He talked about increasing agricultural productivity, but then fails to acknowledge that the Chinese Free Trade Agreement actually provides more opportunities for Australian farmers, actually provides more opportunities for Australian farmers to deal with the Chinese market and puts them on a level, level playing field with our Kiwi cousins. We're at a, we're at a price disadvantage right now with. New Zealand, with Fonterra in particular, the Chinese Free Trade Agreement actually provides opportunities for us to trade into that market on a more competitive basis. So I welcome the opportunity to, to debate this issue and I, I welcome the contribution for the member for Jellybrand because it just shows how hopelessly conflicted the Australian Labor Party is on this issue. And look, I refer to the, the member for North Sydney's second reading speech about the, the nature of the legislation before the House. And as he indicated, it's all about making sure that this legislative package will ensure that Australia has a welcoming environment for investment, but also one that ensures that the investment is not contrary to our national interest. And surely that is the fundamental reason why we're here debating this bill today, making sure that the investment which occurs, the foreign investment which occurs in Australia in the future is not contrary to our national, uh, our national interest. It adds more integrity to the system so that everybody actually plays by the rules, and with that integrity comes the opportunity for more compliance measures. So I, ex I expect, and I think um, the vast majority of people uh, throughout Australia who have raised this issue with me also expect that our foreign investment rules are strong, that they are effective, and they are actually enforceable. And so with this, this, with this package of bills before the House, we are implementing an election promise and keeping faith with the Australian people on our commitment to increase scrutiny and transparency around foreign investment uh, in agriculture. These bills are common sense bills and they have the support of the vast majority of regional Australians I've had the opportunity to meet with in my role as Member of Parliament for the past seven years. Uh, foreign purchase of agricultural land is an issue of great interest uh, to people in my electorate of Gippsland but also more broadly throughout regional Australia. And fundamental to the issue, Deputy Speaker, is getting a handle on exactly what is going on in our nation right now. And the, the opportunity here is to, is to uh, properly measure uh, what, what is occurring throughout regional Australia rather than guessing, as has been the case in the past. So when these new measures uh, were announced in February, I said that people in my electorate uh, would welcome these, uh, this legislation, and that has been the case in the ensuing months as I met with people throughout Gippsland. People in regional areas, uh, the vast majority of people in regional areas are not opposed to foreign investment as such, and they recognise that foreign investment has been critical to the economic development and the growth of Australia, not just regional Australia. And we know that when it comes to agriculture, the, environment, the foreign investment regime strengthens our economy, promotes growth, and can be in our national interest. But that doesn't mean, Deputy Speaker, that we shouldn't apply proper oversight to the, to the rules as they apply in this nation. And these measures are not about stopping foreign investment, but they are about providing Australians with more information about who is buying land in our nation and how much land they're actually buying. As other speakers have recognised, foreign investments can bring many benefits and can support both existing jobs and the opportunity for order. new jobs. The debate is interrupted in accordance with standing order number 43 in the debate papers. This bill will be now read a second time. I give the call to the member for Gippsland in continuation. And thank you, Deputy Speaker. And before I recommence my comments in relation to the bill before the House, uh, the, member, sorry, the Minister for Defence has recently made an important contribution in a ministerial statement in relation to Australia's uh, involvement in the Middle East, in particular Iraq, Syria and Afghanistan. And I 
would like to join uh, with him and associate myself with the comments of both the Minister and the Member for Sydney on behalf of the Nationals. It is uh, good to see such a bipartisan spirit uh, in relation to our commitment to uh, help protect, uh, help train uh, foreign forces uh, in, a, in a way uh, which is helping to provide some uh, prospect at least of peace and stability in a troubled region of the world. I had the opportunity earlier this year as part of the ADFPP program uh, to travel to the Middle East and with a contingent of uh, members of parliament we went to Afghanistan and had the, uh, the great experience of spending some time with our troops on the ground and to see the work they're doing working with the Afghan uh, National Army and helping to keep, keep them or put them in a position where they can perhaps uh, survive the fighting season and, and deliver more security for the people of Afghanistan was a great, uh, a great pleasure and an honour and a privilege for the members of parliament who were part of that program. So I associate myself with the, uh, the comments uh, made by the minister during his ministerial statement. In relation to the, the bill before the House, the Foreign Acquisitions and Takeovers Legislation Amendment Bill, uh, as I was saying be before the uh, break, Deputy Speaker, I think it's well recognised that increased investment both from within Australia and from overseas will be vital to realising Australia's agricultural potential for future growth. And according to a report, I think three years ago now, uh, the, uh, the uh, Greener Pastures, the Global Soft Commodity Opportunity for Australia and New Zealand, which was commissioned, commissioned by the ANZ Bank, there's an estimated uh, $600 billion, Australian dollars that is, in new capital needed through to 2050 to generate higher levels of growth and profitability in Australian agriculture. At the same time, it's essential though that suitable checks and balances are in place to ensure that foreign investments are not contrary to our national interest and provide flow-on benefits uh, for the farmers, for the communities around them and for the national economy. Uh, all foreign investors must pay tax on their business profits made in Australia and furthermore the government requires any business operating in Australia, whether locally or foreign owned, to operate in accordance with Australian law, including Australian tax laws. The, co the coalition government has taken several steps to increase scrutiny and transparency around foreign ownership of agricultural land. This includes developing the foreign owner register of agricultural land. The coalition is also significantly lowering the monetary threshold for screening of foreign investment proposals related to agricultural land and agribusiness from about $250 million down to $15 million and $53 million respectively. The previous thresholds, uh, Deputy Speaker, were actually quite meaningless because it enabled foreign buyers to purchase large tracts of land below that threshold. There's a lot of dairy farms, a lot of vegetable flats in the, in the electric Gippsland would be needed to ever trigger that threshold. The legislation before the House uh, has widespread support in the community. Uh, the National Farmers Federation President Brent Finlay said it would ensure a fact-based discussion about who owns what in Australia. And I quote, he said, we know that 99% of Australian farms are owned by Australian families. We need to see who's buying what so we can have an informed discussion. Uh, the National Farmers Federation Acting Chief Exec Tony Ma said his organisation welcomed overseas investment but supported the current policy of closer scrutiny. Deputy Speaker, in conclusion, Australians are rightly concerned about foreign investment, particularly in relation to agriculture. I think there was a poll uh, conducted by the Lowy Institute of International Policy which found that in 2013 a majority of Australians still considered, and I quote, that the Australian government is allowing too much investment from China, an attitude which has largely changed from 2010. And I fear, Deputy Speaker, that a lot of that concern is driven by fear rather than driven by facts. And so I congratulate the Minister on bringing this legislation to the House so we will have the facts before us. Uh, people need information. They need information at their fingertips and that is what this bill seeks to address. It can never be a bad thing to give people more facts to make informed decisions. Mr Speaker, foreign investment is and will continue to be vital to the future prosperity of regional Australia. But it's equally important we have a robust and a transparent process to give us a clear picture of which foreign entities are investing on our soil. I commend the bills to the House.